Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well, I'm great. Is the camera gonna behave? Are you gonna be one of those days? Got a jar full of bugs here. In the, yeah, it was the last video. Video prior to this one, I talked about how I've been doing the predators. Like if you've been watching, there's been a lot going on with beneficials. Predator mites to eat spider mites. Now I have the mealy bug destroyers here. Cryptolamus montrouseri. I'm sure I butchered that. Cryptolemus Montrezieri. From this point on, I'm just going to be calling them melee bug destroyers. When I started releasing predator mites into my grow space several weeks ago, I made sure to document that there have been tons of updates because there's been a lot going on with that throughout the vlogs that come out on the weekends. I figured instead of having this be in a vlog, should probably just put it out there into a regular video so that people don't have to go searching through a 30 minute video to find the part where I talk about these and let them go. I'll introduce. This is a jar of 500 of the uh, mealybug destroyers from Nature's Good Guys. There are several websites that sell these. Prices are all over the place. Nature's Good Guys, they had some of the best prices I could find for the adults, that is, for larvae. That, that's a whole different thing. We'll talk about that in a minute. Target pest mealybugs of all stages. These are good for many species of mealybugs and soft scale as well. This showed up in the mail about, I don't know, maybe three or four hours ago. They were shipped overnight. It's currently eight degrees outside, I think is what my little sensors are saying, and that's that's pretty dang cold. I brought them in the very second the box got here. I got a little notification from my security system saying that someone's on my front porch, brought them inside, so they weren't outside for, I don't know, however long it took the mail person to walk from their vehicle to the front door. And they were inside of an envelope, no heat pack or anything like that. They were very still. There was a whole pile of them down here at the bottom, so I was thinking, uh-oh, they might be dead but maybe not, let's just give them some time and see what happens there. Gave it a few hours, kept them out of light and just let them come up to room temperature and there's a lot of activity going on in here as you can probably see. So that's good. There are still a bunch on the bottom when I gently tilt it, they aren't falling down, so I'm just going to assume that those are alive as well. I only bring that up because uh, in the past when I've considered the Millibug Destroyer for my Millibug issues that I've been having over the years, one of the reasons that I was hesitant was one, the price, they are expensive. And then whenever I've read about them, there's been a lot of conversation about issues with them being sensitive to temperatures, shipping them out when it's really hot outside or shipping them when it's really cold, that there's a sweet spot. And I'm like, well, it's, like I just said, I think it's eight degrees outside. May have warmed up to 10 by now. I don't know. That's pretty dang cold. These have an optimal or an ideal temp temperature range. And I believe that most of the websites I've looked at have said to keep them between like 65 and 84 degrees somewhere in there with a good amount of humidity like 70 percent i'm sure they can go cooler than 65 degrees and not just drop dead reference range is probably referring more to keep them active in eating certain temperatures will become more calm if it gets too hot then maybe they'll die off metabolisms fluctuate with the temperatures for a lot of creatures so that's likely what that's about but still best to keep them from freezing quick background not gonna give a ton because I don't know a ton, to be honest, and I don't know if that's why you're here. These were brought up from Australia to eat the citrus mealy bugs, and they did a wonderful job. They've gained a lot of popularity over many years because of that. They're still expensive. They don't reproduce the same as regular ladybugs do at anywhere near the same way, which is good because you know, regular ladybugs can be invasive in some ways, like the Asian lady beetles. They're a cute little beetle bug. I know that there are differences. I'm not an etymologist. I'm not going to try and go into all that, but they have a black body or redhead. Supposed to have a ferocious appetite, can eat like 250 mealybugs in their lifetime. That's pretty good. I would like to also place an order for the larvae. More affordable, you can get like a thousand of them for about what it costs to get these 500. This was like 115, dollars for a thing of 500, which would buy a crap ton of regular ladybugs. I figured it would be smart to go with these first, make sure they actually do something before bringing in the larvae. I don't want to just keep introducing beneficials if they're not going to do the job, but not necessarily because there might be something wrong with the beneficials. A growing environment may not be favorable for them. Like I just mentioned, outside, it's pretty freaking cold. And when it's that cold, my heater, my grow space is running at full capacity. And when it's running at full capacity, it dries the air out. The humidifier struggles to keep things around 55 to 60% when it's this cold outside. Luckily, it's not this cold outside all that often. By tomorrow, the humidity should be back up. It's like 55 right now. For tonight, I think the humidity should be fine because I'm going to be spraying everything down with water so that they have something to drink when I let them go. Release them in the area where I'm seeing the mealy bugs 
And that goes back to the larvae. With the larvae, they need to be introduced basically right where the problem is. I know a lot of people swear by them. I'm glad to finally be giving them a try after all these years. I went ahead and I grabbed a jar, threw a damp paper towel in there and a leaf from my Dracaena Reflexa. I grabbed a leaf that has some tiny little babies on it and an egg cluster. That way I can throw a few of them in this jar tonight. I'll put a little paper towel over the top with rubber bands that some air can get in and out and hold them inside. And have a look in the morning and see if they've done any damage on there. Regardless, I'm also going to be releasing these. I let them all go. It's supposed to wait until nighttime, well, early morning or at nighttime. I'm going to give my grow lights another couple of hours to keep running before I shut them off and then spray the plants down very, very, very heavily with the sprayer. That way they can have a drink. I'm going to sprinkle them out onto the plants where I'm noticing the mealybugs. And so far there's only three. If I'm only seeing them on three, there are probably more out there on other plants. I know I said I was going to do three, but I have a feeling it's probably going to be difficult to get a precise amount of these out of here. So I'm just going to give that a shake. No, nope, it doesn't. All right, it doesn't want to do that. Maybe I can just, you want to fall? One, two, three. Oh, wow, that actually worked. Well, no, not really. Okay, they're going everywhere. Four, five, guys, get off the lid. Get off the lid, I have to put the lid back on. Don't want to smash anybody. Okay, there we go. Okay, so maybe five instead of three. Now I'm trying to rescue one that fell down here into a little bit of moisture that I didn't realize was left in the bottom of the jar. You can be okay, bud? Get up on your feet. All right, they're busy having a drink. Not going to be much to show to the camera there. Seal that top up so that they can't get out. I, I don't know if they can crawl up the drawer, but just to be safe, that should be breathable enough for them for tonight. I'm gonna spray all the plants down, release these ladybugs. I'm gonna leave the lights on so I can film it, but as soon as I'm done filming, the lights are going off and we'll cut back in the morning and see if there's any change here in the jar. Good morning. Good morning, Turbo. What you doing? You think that rug's just for you, huh? Release went well. Not much to say, you'll sell it. Briefly showed the spraying down of all of the things. The mealy bug beetle eaters, <laughs> it's, it's very early. As far as what's gone on inside the jar, I don't know if there's going to be much to report on. I took a little peek. About 10 minutes after I shot off the camera last night, I did see them marching around in there and they were munching down on some of the fluffy little babies and what looked like some egg clusters, which is great. I was glad to see that. It's like they were just walking up to them and having a bite. <laughs> Would have made sense to use a jar that I could actually fit my hand inside of. Uh, this is the only one I had. I'm pleasantly surprised with what I'm seeing here. There's only one little cluster left and it's in the same spot. And I did actually see one of them, at least one of them, walk up to this and take a few bites off of that little white chunk you're seeing right there and then walk off. Not seeing anything left on the other side. It's very encouraging. I had some concern with the things I had read about these beetles. With mealybugs, you know, generally when they're adults and out on their own, not much to it. But then there are other mealybugs that gather into their little groups and form those, these little fuzz balls, which is what you saw in there. And then you have the egg masses and some of the egg masses end up on top of some of those different types of mealybugs too when they walk around with them. So it's just a matter of what stages of the mealybugs will they actually eat. And I'd say that's fairly promising. Okay, maybe not going to be 100% because there's still that one left in there, but that's okay. Even if they're only eating the adults to keep at it long enough, as long as the mealybugs get eaten before they reach sexual maturity and start making babies, that's really all that matters. You just have to keep on top of it for several months, probably, which needs to be, I've been doing that anyway. Mealybug situation here is not new, so this is just an alternative method that I'm trying because chemicals really don't work for mealybugs, not unless you go really hardcore with some imidacl pro, which is a systemic that needs to be at a very high strength in order for it to be effective with mealybugs. And even then uh, you have to stay constantly on top of it. And it's hard to get the right dosage without having the proper licenses. So like I have to go through someone to get that chemical. When things get to that point, I would prefer to go the more natural route. With mealybugs, that ends up meaning of manual removal and constant spraying, like just constant, multiple times a week, staying on top of it. Time will tell, we'll see what happens here. They seem sturdy, they seemed healthy, they shipped with the cold, which was unexpected. Wasn't sure how they would do with that. They, I didn't see any dead ones inside that jar at all. They seemed vigorous and healthy. They went all over the place. Now I just have to sit back and wait and see what's going to happen. And uh, well, I was gonna say in a couple of weeks, chances are in the next week or so, I'm gonna look at an extended forecast. I'm gonna place an order for a, maybe a thousand of the larvae and release those as well. If I do that, that will probably be put into a vlog. I doubt I'll do a whole video on that, but 
We've already done all this, so maybe I will. That's the end of that saga. Just have to give it time, see what happens. Everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi. <laughs> What's going on with your plants? You tried the mealybug destroyers for your mealybugs. I know I meant to talk about this earlier and I didn't. Ladybugs are rumored to be great for eating mealybugs. I've released at least like maybe seven to 10,000 in the growth space so far this winter, and I saw mealybugs. I'm gonna go ahead and call BS on that one. Not to say that they will never eat mealybugs, but I've always done the ladybug thing and always had mealybugs. Well, not always, but like the last five or six years, so yeah. So yeah, it's just not reliable. Hopefully this will be. Also done the soldier beetle larvae, which is just the lacewing larvae. No real success there, but this is this seems much more promising. At least when they're contained in a jar with nowhere else to go and nothing else to eat. That worked fairly well, at least on this leaf. Hopefully that will translate to the rest of the growth space. All right, as always, you sleepy baby? All worn out? Yeah, you had a good walk. And good boy, Turpo. Uh, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.